Hey guys, I just got back from the hospital. I still have to wait the 10 days for the MRI, but I'm not going to be admitted yet. I uh, I did want to address this. <clears throat> it's happened to a few people. Uh, I've heard this a lot, you know, well, you're sick because God's punishing you. And I've had a lot of people say I'm disabled and uh, my health issues are because of my false gospel. The gospel I give you is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's God's grace through faith alone. Repentance is to turn from what you trust in to trusting in Christ's finished work on the cross. None of yourselves at all. Uh, you can't be saved or enter heaven without all your sins being gone. Not some of them, not the ones you can try really hard not to commit. But you commit sin every day, and so does everyone else. We break God's law all the time. Worry is sin. It is the absence of faith. Whatever is not of faith is sin. I mean, we, we really got to know how the law can shut our mouths, to stop our mouths, make us guilty before God. And the problem is most people just don't realize the depths of sin and how it's not just the big stuff. It's, it's our thought, word, and deed daily. That's why we have to rest in him. And so... I want to mention this because people really get turned away from God when people say things like that. Uh, God isn't punishing me, okay? He's not the author of illness. Uh, and I'll show you that in scripture, that it's Satan that makes people sick, all right? Uh, and we're supposed to put on the full armor of God, a saved person that does have open doors uh, through a lot of sin, like getting into the occult and stuff like that. You will open your doors to Satan to destroy you, okay? Do you remember when the man was sleeping with his stepmom and wouldn't repent of that? Paul said, turn him over to Satan to destroy his flesh so that God may save his spirit on the day of the Lord. Do you see that? He's going to pay for that sin here in himself, okay? But he's still saved by God by faith, all right? So, um, I'd also like to tell you my partner's atheist. Not just atheist, but kind of despises God. It's funny to me because he doesn't hate the tooth fairy or the Easter bunny that much. I mean, it didn't exist. I don't know why he's so angry. But in any case, he, he does fine. See, because he's already in the devil's hand. Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. You know? So most people don't realize that. If devil's already got you, there's no reason to poke you and do these things because then you might turn to God for help. You see that? Sometimes trials in this life, which is what happened to me, because I had it all and I was so miserable. You know, I told you that day I got that big movie contract and just bought my bins, had ordered a bunch of furniture and designer clothes. I was I stopped at a bar and just sat there and drank oyster shoots all night by myself. I was so miserable thinking this is it. And I've said before, you get to the top and there's nothing there. And it's horrible. It's why many celebrities die, I believe, by accident and end up so depressed. Um, so uh, Satan's not going to uh, attack one of his own. He doesn't need to. Now, they might possess them. And, you know, of course, demons get their kick out of tormenting people. But the targets are saved people or people really looking for God then being, you know, attacked. Because those are the ones that he wants to crush their faith. See, and make them fall apart because he, he tells you his motive in Job so that he'll curse God to disprove our love for God. Our faith isn't real. But remember this. We never boast in our love for God. We boast in his love for us here in his love. Not that we love God, but that he first loved us. OK, so we always boast in his love because it's perfect. And his love is what saves us, not our love for him. Not how obedient we are. It's the obedience and righteousness of one. And we rest in what he did. And his righteousness is imputed on us. And therefore, all sin's gone. But if you add your work of, I'm going to, it's Jesus plus uh, how much sin I've turned from. No, that's keeping the law. Okay? Should you? Of course you should. But you can't even address sin until you're saved. And the Holy Spirit's in you and he starts getting to the root of these things. Sometimes the behaviors are a symptom of a deep-seated sin problem in the heart. So you can't even begin to repent of anything. And you don't have to repent of a thing except your unbelief in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ to be saved. Yes, there's going to be bad people in heaven and the self-righteous people, ain't it? 
we're all bad. All have fallen short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. Um, I'm trying to get this thing to work here. All right, so let me give you some verses to show you that. So you don't go telling somebody, you're Renee, you're suffering because you're false gospel. God's punishing you. No, God's not punishing me. See, Satan wants me destroyed. He wants my faith to fall apart and go, why would God allow this to me? This is a fallen world and stuff happens and I've done a lot of terrible stuff. I mean, I'm so grateful I'm saved because of his, his death, burial, and resurrection. For me, I don't have anything to fuss about. And anyway, this is what made me stronger to begin with. This is what made me sit around 10 years looking through his scriptures, trying to figure this stuff out. It brought me to God. You know, so faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I, I suggest we all stay in that word because that's what's going to strengthen us. But you have to see it through the Holy Spirit that has to teach it, teach you through the eyes of God's grace. So you can understand it rightly divided. I was thinking, you know, you can't rightly divide an NIV unless you use a chainsaw. That's how you rightly divide an NIV or an EST in half with a knife or a hatchet. They're worthless. They've corrupted the true word of God in uh, King James. It's very frustrating. Anyway, don't tell people that's ridiculous. Oh, God's punishing you. You have a false gospel. I'm telling you the same gospel word for word Paul preached. And I've given tons of verses on how you add one work. If you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Circumcision is a work of the law. Any work that you do added to what he did means you haven't trusted, like in Ephesians, and who we trusted. We were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We got the Holy Spirit when he said, this is only what I ask of you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law? Because you were willing to stop those sins? Or by the hearing of faith? Paul said, I come to you knowing nothing but Christ and him crucified. And if he's going to boast, he's going to boast in his weakness. I'm so weak. I can't save myself. But we're boasting in what Christ did, saving us because we can't. See, as a little child depends on their father, that's what we do. We simply rest. We who have believed have entered into rest. So let me get some verses here to show you that God's not punishing me. He's not punishing anybody that is is uh, sick or struggling or is disabled. You know, they say I'm disabled because it's, it's, um, God's punishing me. Really? That's the God you have? That's your evil? No. No. We can open the door and Satan can attack us. There's legal rules in the spirit realm. There's laws, and Satan uses those laws to his advantage, you know? So uh, let me give you this. It's just so cruel to say that anyway, but, I mean, my, my skin's tough. But sometimes I had started recording something while I was in the hospital, and I was like, no, because I was just in too much pain, and I knew that I was going to be too emotional, and I had to make sure I was standing on Scripture and not Renee's opinion. All right, so let me uh, give you this. Now, this is when this woman <clears throat> had been sick for a long time, and the Pharisees were judging Jesus for uh, healing her on the Sabbath, and he calls them hypocrites. You know, if your ox fell into the ditch, you wouldn't help him out because it's work on, on Saturday on your Sabbath. Uh, hypocrites. Um, and they missed the whole purpose. Of the, the heart of the law is mercy. All right. So, because it means that everything's sacred. You know, you your relationship with God is sacred. Other people's lives are sacred. Their property is sacred. Their marriage is sacred. And we honor it because we don't steal it. And we don't break up marriages. And we don't commit adultery. And we don't fornicate. These are because we love God. It's all mercy and love is the heart of the law. That's why we don't break the law. Because it's, it's of course, we all have. But it's out of love for him. See, so, so you're telling people not to keep the commandments? Why do people hear that? I, I've never said that. You just don't focus on the commandments. You focus on what Jesus did for you and that you're saved, putting on the helmet of salvation. We who believed have entered into rest. So we're resting what he did, knowing with full assurance of faith that we're saved. And I, you know, all these hypothetical straw men, it's so stupid. Unless you plan on going out and murdering somebody, what do you care if, if a murder? So you're saying somebody can just murder and keep murdering and go to heaven? It, it's just so stupid, these straw men. Worry about you. Worry about what God said you need to do. And that's put your trust. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Period. And I believe it. All right, so this is what Jesus says to them, and it's proving that it's Satan that's made her sick and in this bondage, not God, all right? Luke 13, 16. 
And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham? Now remember, all people who have faith in Christ, resting in what he did, are children of Abraham. Okay, because it's by faith. It's, and he even tells the Jews, you know, you think you're saved because you're uh, uh, in the lineage of Abraham. I tell you the truth, God can raise up children from Abraham from these very stones. He's saying, don't rely on your nationality. Rely on, uh, it's your, your responsibility is through faith in God. So, uh, and ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? You see, it's Satan that bound her. God didn't do it to her. So sick when people say that kind of mess. All right, now here's when Satan comes before God. And he's, uh, you know, you know he's the accuser of the brethren. He accuses us before God day and night. And I find it interesting that all these so-called Christians, no wonder people hate so-called Christians because that's what's representing us. Where's all the true grace people out there preaching the real gospel? You know, all these big pastors. And they're, of course they're big. The world loves them and speaks highly of them. You know, we're warned when people speak highly of you. They should be like, eh, you know, because we repel them because we're speaking of God's grace. See, I was telling my son's aunt, Satan's greatest trick is morality. Is he? T is it wrong? Oh, no, of course not. You, you should have a good moral standing. You shouldn't steal. You shouldn't fornicate. You shouldn't hurt people. You shouldn't lie. You shouldn't murder, you know. Uh, but his greatest trick is to tell you that morality, having good morals and being a good person gets you to heaven. But it tells us all have fallen short of the glory of God. There's none good, no, not one. And his big trick, because it says Satan comes as a, uh, an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of righteousness. So they're, they're teaching you righteous things, but they're telling you that that righteousness, which is your self-righteousness, is going to help save you. That's the trick here. See how he's flipped it. Instead of God's righteousness, which is given to us and wipes out every sin because we've trusted in the blood atonement of Christ, we have no sin on our account. Okay? It's gone. Past, present, and future. All our sins were future when he, when 2,000 years ago. But I was saved 2,000 years ago because it was finished. All I did was go, oh, it's done. That's mine. So I'm saved. And then once that happened, I started under, now I don't understand everything I have to study and more is being revealed to all of us as we study God's word and we grow in his grace through the milk of the word. But I didn't really understand scripture until that happened because the Holy Spirit teaches us all truth. And it makes me sad when people see God in such an ugly light. They just don't get it. They just don't get it. And it's sad. I want people free and they hate me for it. All right, now here we go in Job. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. Now is that is Satan in hell torturing people? All these fake hell visits? No, he's the prince of the power of the air. He's in the second heaven. They tell you his very throne is in Pergamos where the temple of Zeus was. He's, he's on this earth and in the realm around the earth, the prince of the power of the air. Come on, people. He's not, it's not Hades, the Greek god that ran the underworld. All right. So, and the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? And there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. See, Satan saying, well, the reason he's so uh, obedient and loving to you is because you've put a hedge around him. I can't touch him. See, there's no legal loophole. Why? Because it tells you that Job was offering sacrifices for himself and for his sons just in case they had committed some sin to offend God and didn't know about it. See, he was offering up the shadow of the son of the living God. And that was a hedge around him because he was honoring the future event of Jesus on the cross. You see, he didn't know that then, but that's what he was doing when he was offering up the animals. Okay. Uh, and, and so Satan needed a legal loophole. I'm not sure what that was. It could have been Fear, because Job says, the thing I feared has come upon me. So fear, what is not of faith, is sin. Could have been the open door of legal, the legal reason. I can't know that. And in any case, none of us deserve God's protection. 
or anything. So there's no reason to even, you know, question why this happened. This book used to make me really mad, but it answers a lot of questions. So I just, I realize I see through the glass darkly. I am, it says, what right does the, the clay have to ask the potter? Why'd you make me like this? You know, I have to just rest in him. His, his love is proven to us when I look at the cross. And so that's, that's how I'm assured of God's love for me and his grace. Okay. Now, um, and the Lord said unto Satan, behold, all that he hath is in thy power only upon himself, put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth in the presence of the Lord. Now we know all this stuff happened. He lost his kids, his wealth, all this. And then he still wouldn't curse God. Even after his wife said, curse God and die. Foolish. But uh, eventually, Satan's like, well, let, let me go ahead and just at least make him sick. And he starts getting boils all over his body. So it's not God that's doing that to Job. Do you see that? It was just the hedge of protection had fallen. And Satan took a legal loophole to attack. And that's what's happening with all of God's people when they get sick. All right? It's not God doing that to them. Quit saying this evil stuff about our God. It's just horrible. Now, I want to show you right here why it is that the atheists and wicked people seem to get away with everything. It's like, what? They're rich. They don't ever have to pay for anything. They just get away with hurting all these people because they're going to pay for it in the end. They are heaping coals of judgment on their head daily. Okay, it tells you right here that we're not judged with it. We are his children. We are born of God. Once we put our trust, as Moses lifted up the bronze serpent, what did they do that day? I hate John MacArthur's view of this. It is not biblical. It is absolutely made up. But this is what it really means. The Israelites were bit by serpents, okay? They had sinned, and that was a judgment. But Moses was told to make a bronze serpent, lift it up, and as the Israelites looked upon it with faith, based on what God promised, if you look upon this, you will be healed and will not die, okay? They looked at it with faith and believed what God said. What does it say? Abraham believed God, and it's counted him for righteousness, okay? For him that worketh not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Right there. Your faith is considered, you make you righteous. All right. You believed what God promised. Now, just like he lifted up the bronze serpent, we look upon Christ on the cross. Now, why a serpent to heal him? That's kind of like Satan-y sounding. Because the serpent represented the sin that Christ would become for us on the cross. Okay. So we look upon Christ who becomes sin for us died, paid the price, fulfilled the law, and took our wrath. We look at that cross with faith and are healed of the second death. All right. That is salvation. That's how you're born of God. All right. So we are not judged with the world. They will face their judgment. All right. Now, every person will answer for what they did. We will answer for what we did with this free gift. Did you serve God after? What'd you do with that gift he gave you? Did you try to help other people come to truth in Christ? You know, you're going to answer for that. But it's not a matter of heaven and hell. All right. Let's read this. John 16, 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. So that's the sin that sends you to hell. You get that? Not trusting Christ. That's it. He paid for everything. But the only reason that was not covered is because you have to receive the gift by faith. And if you don't have the faith to receive it, you don't have it. You know, if I buy you a car and leave it a mile down the road and give you the keys, uh, you don't have it yet. You won't have the car until you go pick it up. It's there for you. It's finished. It's yours, but you, you haven't received it yet. You see, it's the same thing with salvation. It's there. It's finished. It's all boxed up. You just reach out by faith and take it. All right. Now, it says of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Okay. Who does he convict of righteousness? All who trust in him. He became sin for us who knew no sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What does it mean by might? Say so those conditions. No, it means that you might become that way if you believe. Okay, that's what that's saying. All right, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Okay, so when he comes, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Okay, you see that? So that's what's going to happen there. So if, if a person already belongs to Satan, he's going to he's going to more like leave them alone because any trial might turn them for you know make them go to God for help. 
and he doesn't want that. So uh, just because somebody's ill or something is no, it doesn't mean God's punishing them. Quit saying that wicked mess. I mean, it makes more atheists. It's just horrible, horrible, horrible stuff to say. All right? All right, guys. God bless you.